All right. Well, welcome to uh, Flexera Right Scale Overview Learning Lab. We're excited to have you with us. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how Right Scale fits into the broader Flexera vision. And then I'll spend a few minutes walking you guys around the platform at a high level. Um, and of course, if you have questions, please get in touch with us via your account manager or um, through the proper sales channels. We'll be happy to answer any questions there or on the community. So RightScale has been a part of the Flexera family now for around six to eight months, and we're very excited to be joining um, the powerful solutions that Flexera has been offering around software license optimization and technology insights. And what we're really excited about is Flexera has been um, heavily focused on providing insight um, into their businesses. And RightScale has been focused on providing automation of anything, especially as it relates to multi-cloud environments. And now that you know we're a part of the Flexera family and being brought together and integrated into a full solution, um, our goal is really to help automate outcomes, whether that's related to software as a service or software licenses or even hardware um, in the data center and on desktop. So we're really looking forward to um, how we can help optimize technology assets. Uh, Flexera's goal is to optimize 60% of the IT landscape, and we're excited to get involved with you, especially as it relates to your cloud environment. Kind of shifting to give you guys a high-level overview of Flexera's CMP, this is really the, the architecture view of the platform. So starting on the southbound side, right scale is extensible to integrate with any API. Um, and some of the common integrations, you know, that you might expect are integration into public and private clouds. So the hyperscalers, Amazon, Azure, and Google, or VMware, OpenStack, and even into bare metal and containers. And it's important to note that we've architected the platform to be um, extensible to integrate with any cloud service. So as long as there's an API, we can tie into it. And then if you move up the stack here into the value add, the way the conversation typically goes with our customer base is they get started on the cost management and optimization side. So um, we input their bills into Optima, their cloud bills. And then that leads us from insight to taking action. And that action is typically related to cost optimization to start to make sure we can clean up the state that's actually probably um, the top initiative as it relates to enterprise cloud initiatives today is to saving money and getting rid of waste. And then that typically expands into security and compliance policies or operational policies. Really, we like to call that governance as code on anything as it relates to cloud service or any of the um, cloud environments that you see below. From there, um, our, the governance um, kind of extends into template-based end-user provisioning or cloud enablement use cases. So think about bringing your automation constructs like Terraform or cloud formation templates, ARM templates, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, into a service catalog to provide a common way for end-users to get access to cloud. Specifically for that use case, that's, a, that's really a governance use case. It's not meant to replace the automation constructs that you have um, in your environment, it's meant to add governance on top of them. And then one of the other things that we're hearing quite a bit from our end customers is how do I govern you know, the actual cloud accounts? How do I make sure the cloud accounts that I'm providing to my enterprise are secure and compliant and cost optimized? So they're actually using Plexera CMP to stand up a given cloud account, whether that's with AWS or Azure. Um, and then associating the proper permissions and access controls, the proper security and cost policies, all the way to the, the showback of the resources that are actually happening within that AWS and Azure account. So, you know, originally CMPs, you may have thought, um, were to help um, templatize and ensure that things were cost optimized and compliant before they even 
entered the cloud, but that's even extending into things like cloud accounts now. So before, you know, you can even provision a resource in the cloud. So you guys have probably seen the industry reports at this point. Um, please reach out to us in the community if you'd like access to them. We'll provide links there. Um, but this is actually, this is pretty interesting. Um, Forrester did a review in Q2 of 2018, um, and they split the market into two spaces. And the first one was cloud cost monitoring and optimization, and the second one was an overall hybrid cloud management space. We it came out as the leader in both, um, but it's a great it's a great view into the market sp space. You can see the players are a little bit different when you look at the cloud cost monitoring and optimization space. There's a lot of people doing some of that cost management work um, on the automation side. Um, that's really where RightScale was born. So you can see um, we're kind of far and away uh, the leader there. Uh, but Gartner actually combined this space. And we think that's important because while um, insight is key to understanding, you know, your cloud spend or really any of the different use cases in security compliance or operational needs, to actually solve these problems, um, we think aut automation is the key. Um, and so um, enterprises today are asking for reactive automation and policies that, that actually proactive automation before anything hits the cloud that it's optimized and compliant. This is the last slide I'll show you guys today, but essentially this is the engagement model um, and it's how we like to um, bring our customers along the journey in terms of cloud management. And what it starts with is plugging your public and your private clouds into RightScale. And from there, on day one, we're able to monitor the data that's there. And we start to contextualize it. Um, the contextualization is important. What that means is we can then show back who's spending what and where. But then that also allows our cost optimization services team to actually see how we can save money. And what they do is they take recommendations from the platform. So you can see some examples here, whether it's scheduled instances or updating from old to new instance types or getting rid of storage waste like unattached volumes. They're able to take that first pass from the platform, contextualize it to your environment and provide a roadmap on how to actually save money and to clean up waste. And all that is awesome and differentiated, but where we think this really shines is in the cleanup waste section, which is where we provide best practice automation policies to clean up the state, to make sure the waste is removed, but then month over month to be running in the background and ensure the waste doesn't come back. So any questions about that, let us know. Um, that's kind of the cost management and optimization story. This quickly expands um, with our customers into governance policies that relate to security, operational, um, or any compliance use cases. An example um, we talk about often is a policy that runs in the background and looks for open buckets, for example, in AWS or Azure. Just Google um, S3 AWS open buckets, and you'll see a plethora of different news articles about people who have left open buckets open to the internet. Um, so the policy engine is really meant to be that reactive engine to ensure that you're cost optimized um, and secure and compliant. And then Nirvana for our customers is really about these governed approved templates throughout the life cycle of their cloud. So what, and I talked about this at the start, but so whether that's actually creating a cloud account um, so that it's secure and cost optimized or it's creating a cloud service um, that's multi-cloud abstracted and can be provisioned in public or private cloud, or even integrating with existing automation that you already have um, and adding governance standards to that, like schedules or tags or end dates, for example. So these are some of the key ways that we engage with our customers, and I'm going to take you on a very high-level um, overview of the platform just so you can see what this kind of looks like. All right, so let me reload here, get into the uh, demo account.
All right. So while this is number crunching, um, essentially um, where I've taken us is into the Optima side of right scale. Um, and this is that day zero experience. And what we're looking at is, a, is an executive level view of all of our spend connected to right scale. And I'm looking at the different regions that we're running in today um, from June 1, 2018 till today. You'll see that we can slice by a monthly view, a quarterly view, a daily view. Um, it's extremely granular. We do do some post-processing to make things simple. So we'll show you one time and upfront cost spread evenly, or we can show one time and upfront cost at the time of the purchase. That's helpful when you're looking at discount options within the cloud and when you specifically made purchases. And then keep in mind this dashboard is completely customizable. Um, so we provide a few defaults out of the box, but if it's on the bill, you can create a custom dashboard based on it. Um, should be helpful for you to get that insight you need um, into your bill. On this overview dashboard, we provide a number of different options on how to slice your bill. Um, so very quickly, you can start to understand the different trends and things that are going in with your cloud spend as a whole. Um, I was just showing this to one of my customers the other day. And while this is kind of old hat to the Flexera folks, um, to our customers, sometimes this is the first time they've seen all of their clouds found in one place. Um, and they're using this dashboard to report up cloud spend to their CIO. So it's become very important to their daily, weekly, monthly reporting process. You, of course, can implement and add your custom tags into here, which makes this data pretty interesting. If I slice by one of the tags, for example, I'll grab, grab the cost center tag, um, it changes the data, and then we can see different spend as it relates to tags. If I go back to, say, instance types, um, again, that changes the data. It's very fast, very performant. Um, we get a very easy understanding of what's going on within the clouds, and then I can quickly see the clouds that I have connected to this account. Where our customers typically go from there is they want to contextualize their spend. So if you remember back to the um, adoption curve I showed you guys, um, contextualizing allows us to see who does what and where, but it allows, also allows us to see the potential areas for savings. So you can see each one of these logical groupings of the bill has a potential savings area, an overview of the last month's spend, and what they're spending today. And if we drill into a billing center, we'll see that the dashboard looks very similar to what we showed up front, but then also you can customize billing centers to be whatever you, you want them to be. Um, so it's very flexible engine. Um, within each billing center, it's um, a barrier for access. So you can do role-based access control here. You can see your automated recommendations and you can slice and dice and pivot on any, really anything on the bill. So once we have that contextualization set up, the next thing we do is we walk people through basically how to take action on their spend. And that takes us into the policy catalog. Flexera provides a number of best practice out-of-the-box policies that you can take and customize. We call these policies really governance as code. Um, they're just templates that you can edit and customize and contextualize to your enterprise. It's extremely powerful and flexible engine that can integrate with any API and really is one of the major differentiators within Flexera CMP. So you'll see that we have options to schedule budget alerts or to review cheaper regions or to help with your RIs. And even um, examples that will help with um, license management in the cloud or cost anomalies. So you'll see a number of different reporting use cases, but you'll also see um, use cases where we can clean up waste. So for example, with this unattached volumes policy, we can come in and click apply to a specific subset of accounts, and we can set up if a volume has been unattached for a given number of days, say 30, or we could change it to 60 if we want to be a little less aggressive. And we could then set the action to email only or email and delete. 
Um, and so that's up to you guys. Typically, customers start with email only, and then they move to email and delete um, based on the account parameters they want to set up. So that's an example of how customers take action with the policy engine. Um, another good example that I like to show is scheduling instances. This policy will actually go in and start and stop an instance based on a tag. Um, and even, even policies as powerful that, are, that will downsize instances based on CPU and memory parameters. Um, I have a customer that I'm talking to currently that wants to um, integrate with their CPU and memory metrics. They use um, an agent um, called Prometheus. I have other customers that want to integrate with their Zabbix or CloudWatch metrics or Azure metrics. Um, and again, that's all possible because this engine is extensible to integrate with any API. We mentioned that from there, typically the conversation extends into security policies, you know, looking for internet facing ELB and ALBs, looking for open buckets, um, even seeing licenses at risk. Um, and then, you know, a number of different options like RDS backup settings or looking for recent snapshots or ensuring that your tags are in sync. The last part of the platform that I'll show you today is the self-service um, product. And this is more of that proactive workflow engine that allows you to define templates um, to basically govern what's going on in the cloud before it gets there. And so you'll see a number of examples like um, spinning up a container cluster or a Linux server or even um, a stack that waits for approval and creates a ServiceNow incident to click launch. Um, and actually before it's able to launch, you have to click approve. Um, so there's kind of three key use cases I'll call out. So the first use case would be um, spinning up um, a multi-cloud or a hybrid cloud template um, that you've defined. The second use case would be bringing in your existing automation into a consistent catalog like a cloud formation template or an ARM template or some of the Ansible scripts that you have. And then the third use case that I'm seeing um, is what we talked about earlier, um, which we call cloud enablement. So defining that cloud account before it's even created. So creating an Amazon or an Azure um, or a Google account with the proper roles, permissions, policies, and cost management. So I'll show you an example of what one of these looks like. So if we want to stand up this corporate Linux server, I can come in here and click launch, and I can give it a name and a description. And then the designer um, has given us a number of deployment options. And these are completely customizable um, to whatever you, you'd like to show to the end user. So you can give them the option of cloud or not. Um, you could just give them the server performance level. And you'll see in this example, they're not calling out an instance name or an instance type. This is completely up to the designer. It really is truly a governed model um, to ensure that you're picking the proper regions and the proper instance types um, that your company needs. So if I pick high performance, you know, this could be a relatively um, relatively cheap instance type, and that's really up to you to decide instead of the end user. And then um, you see a number of different examples here from servers to launch to the proper cost center, which is really just a tag on the back end to help with showback, and then a runtime schedule. Something that's interesting is about 30% of the cloud world is doing scheduling well. And so something as simple um, as a service catalog that prompts an end user to schedule will actually increase um, the amount of schedules used across an organization. Still won't be perfect, but you can definitely prompt them um, to do well here. And then of course, one of the most common ways to save money is to actually have automation clean this stuff up when it's done. So if I only need this through the end of the month, um, I can just click my date and launch the cloud app. Um, a lot of people leave the lights on, as you know. So. So if I head back to our adoption model, um, let's just kind of review. So um, 
we would integrate those, that cloud spend into Optima, help you contextualize those groups, see where you can save money, and then give you the tools to take action on it. So it really is from insight to action, um, which is which is the key of solving the problem. And then these policies can send, extend to anything with an API. Some of the common use cases is security operational and compliance use cases, and then the full lifecycle automation around governed templates that are business approved so that before the workload even gets there, um, it's cost optimized or secure. So that's a quick high level tour of Flexera CMP. If you have more questions, please ask questions on the community or reach out to your account manager. We appreciate you joining on today. Thanks.